The best laptop for programming is more than just about having sheer power. Besides having one of the best processors inside your machine, you also need to look at speed and storage, as those things are just as important for compiling code. The Google Pixelbook is the result of years of incredible work on Google's part in refining a unified design across its hardware offerings. But, the Pixelbook could also be seen as a sort of coming of age for Google's design philosophy. It's easy to say that this is the most stunning and remarkably designed computing device from Google yet. From the brushed aluminum frame with flush edges to the rubberized palm rest and underside, every design element has achieved style and substance in equal measure. However, if you haven't purchased a laptop in the last few years, you might have a hard time accepting the lack of ports. Still, the Google Pixelbook is at least future-proof. The same can't be said of the audio, however. This has become normal in thin and light notebooks, Google has crammed the speakers beneath the keyboard, and the result is tinny sound. Fortunately, a 3.5mm audio jack is there to let you use the best headphones with the Pixelbook. The Pixelbook earns the Pixel when it comes to the 3-2 display. At 235p with accurate color reproduction, the Pixelbook display rivals some of the best around, Chromebook or otherwise. It's in the same class as the 227p 13-inch MacBook Pro and the 267p Surface Pro 6. The panel works stunningly for movies and photos, as well as photo editing. The 400 nits of brightness help hugely with this. It is still a glossy screen however, and as such doesn't stand up to direct sunlight all that well. At any rate, the display is also extremely accurate to the touch, especially when underneath the Pixelbook pen. What we have with the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Extreme is a design that has been honed, like the evolution of the shark, to a point where most changes are internal rather than major external divergence. That said, Lenovo must be complimented on the engineering of this notebook's body, which combines a four-layer carbon fiber upper surface with an aluminum alloy lower chassis to provide a highly durable shell. The only significant downside of this overall design is how heavy it is. At more than 4 pounds this isn't a system that you'll want to carry for long, and it isn't a computer that you can easily pick up with one hand. For those who have never owned a ThinkPad, the only warning we give is that against conventional keyboard logic, the function key is on the far left of the bottom row, rather than control. That's not a huge problem for most users, but it might take some acclimatization for those who use a desktop computer with a conventionally laid out keyboard alongside this notebook. With a laptop this powerful, the fan can kick in when you start pushing the system, and with the X1 Extreme, this is clearly audible. However, to get the fan spinning at maximum speed requires the GPU to be fully occupied, and the majority of the time this won't be the case. The port allocation is excellent with two full Thunderbolt 3 connectors, and the only disappointment is the use of a proprietary power supply port, rather than a Type-C. At least the power connector is a robust effort, and not one of the horrible needle variety that can fall out so easily. Note that the X1 charges from flat in about 2.5 hours. The light gold finish of the Vivo Book Pro 15 easily recognizable and hard to miss. With a 15.6 inch display, the overall footprint of the Vivo Book Pro 15 is a bit on the large side. Measuring 15 by 10 by 0.8 inches and with a combination of metal and plastic housing, this laptop dances the line of trade-offs for portability over durability, weighing 5.05 pounds. The Vivo Book 15 Pro is on the cusp of being too large for easy portability. You'll undoubtedly notice a difference between the MacBook Pro and Vivo Book Pro 15 in your backpack when walking across campus. As a laptop that's labeled for Pro users, the Vivo Book Pro doesn't disappoint when it comes to ports. On the left edge is where you'll find the charging port, an RJ45 Ethernet port, USB 3.1, HDMI and a USB-C 3.1 port. The opposite edge is home to two USB 2.0 ports, an SD card reader, 3.5mm headphone slash microphone jack and two indicator lights. With more than enough ports to connect external displays, either through HDMI or the USB-C port, along with Ethernet and USB ports for accessories and backup drives, you should be covered no matter your setup. A nearly full-sized keyboard with chiclet keys is found just below the FHD display. The keys have a slim profile and are responsive. A relatively small number pad is present, but we found the keys a bit too thin to lend themselves to fast key punching. Embedded near the top right corner of the touchpad is a fingerprint sensor used to unlock the laptop. 
Breaking up the flow of the touchpad is frustrating and not a decent trade-off for the added biometric feature. The sensor gets in the way, for example, when dragging text or a file across the display, there has to be a better way. Razer has completely retooled the look of the blade, and it really is drop-dead gorgeous. The corners are slightly more squared off, giving it an edgier look that's still classy. The chassis is still black aluminum, but Razer's green, tri-headed snake icon is still the lower back tattoo of laptop logos, and its presence here does kill some of the elegance. Lifting the lid reveals a 15.6-inch display with minimal bezel, a chroma-enabled keyboard with RGB lighting flanked by speakers, and a large trackpad on the black aluminum deck. At 4.6 pounds and 14 by 9.3 by 0.7 inches, the blade is still portable and svelte. On the left side of the laptop, there's a pair of USB 3.1 ports, a headphone jack and a power jack. While USB Type-C can't deliver enough power for a gaming notebook, Razer's proprietary adapter is a similar shape and is reversible, which I appreciated. The right side of the laptop has a Thunderbolt 3 port, a USB 3.1 port, HDMI output, a mini display port and a Kensington lock slot. The 15.6 inch, 144Hz Full HD screen on the Razer Blade is perfectly usable, and it looks great with such minimal bezel. But it's not as bright or as vivid as competing gaming notebook displays. With just 1mm of travel and 72 grams required to actuate the keys, the keyboard on the new Razer Blade isn't all that comfortable. The blade has a really spacious 5.0 by 3.1 inch touchpad with Microsoft's Windows 10 precision drivers. Adorned with gold accents and beautiful without being ostentatious, the Stealth Thin is the Bond girl of gaming laptops. The entirety of the laptop's chassis is made from black, matte sandblasted aluminum alloy. Instead of the usual backlit red and white dragon sigil logo, MSI employs a little Midas touch, replacing it with a printed black and gold emblem. A thin, Diamond-cut golden strip lines the top of the lid. The company also added some gold to the side vents for an elegant flash of color. Since it's designed for work and play, MSI equipped the Stealth with a flexible hinge that allows you to lay the display flat, just in case you need to do a quick collaboration. Pressing Ctrl plus Alt plus down arrow will flip the screen orientation 180 degrees to provide a better view for the person sitting across from you. The interior of the laptop is stately, with more black aluminum. The power button and touchpad are lined in gold, with a glowing, gilded keyboard. While I'm a fan of the overall look, my favorite part of the interior is the top-mounted vent, with its delicate floral designs. While the Strelth's frame is definitely thin, it still has plenty of ports. On the right sits a USB 3.1 Type-A port, Thunderbolt 3, a mini display port, HDMI and the power jack. You'll find a pair of USB 3.1 Type-A ports, Gigabit Ethernet, a secure lock slot, a microphone jack and a S-slash-peef jack for high-res audio. So, just how slim is the Stealth Thin? Extremely. At 14.1 by 9.8 by 0.7 inches, the 4.1-pound laptop is one of the slimmest gaming laptops on the market. The Stealth's 15.6-inch display only comes in 1920 by 1080 resolution. But while I wished for a QHD or 4K version, I appreciated the 144Hz refresh rate, which should help cut down on screen tears and latency.